Capitalism's a religion that makes faith in the garden. To countless fans, Immortal Technique is a revolutionary rapper. <laughs> Those hearing him for the first time will notice it's not your conventional packaged and branded hip hop. Who really made Bin Laden the man that he is? The CIA. Heck is as much an artist as he is a political activist. Lyrically tackling issues like war, poverty, and racism, this New Yorker makes no apologies for his words or perspectives. Most, if not all, of your lyrics focus on uh, political issues and socioeconomic inequalities that are taking place domestically and internationally. At this point in time, with all the problems mounting up all over the world, what are you focusing on? Most recently, one of the larger things that I was focused on was the situation in Afghanistan and actually we had this conversation off camera so we'll just get into it right now uh, the litmus test that is provided for um, our justification of invasion of another country I think that while a lot of people would question um, our entrance into Iraq and said we should have never gone to Iraq we should have never gone to this country never there's some people that say we we showed up to Bosnia too late you know we we should have gone there earlier and the question is well what is the litmus test when should we invade some people say oh well what about Rwanda shouldn't we have gone there mm -hmm. so at some point we have to confront um, the circumstances that are behind when the United States of America finally releases its military force to aid or to topple the regime and I don't think that that's clearly defined I think that there are talking points people come up with to say alright this person's a bad person this person's a dictator they treat their people terribly that's fine but we also are at peace and we support plenty of dictators who treat their people horribly and we have done that systematically over the years we used our cold war with Russia in the past to justify behavior like this claiming that if we didn't all of a sudden it would fall to the communists and the economy would turn uh, into a a wash for us that we wouldn't have access to any natural resources everything would be nationalized and now I don't think that we can really use that excuse anymore so we come up with other ones oh they're gonna be taken over they'll become a safe haven for terrorism or whatever it may be but I think that as time progresses with any occupation it begins to be revealed what the real reasons for us invading the country are and they're to benefit us and to benefit our corporations rather than the safety of the civilians either there or here. On at least one occasion Eisenhower was heard to say by those in the room, God help this country when somebody sits at this desk who doesn't know as much about the military as I do. My fellow Americans, this evening I come to you with a message of leave-taking and farewell, and to share a few final thoughts with you, my country. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. He has been labeled as a genius, a prophet, a visionary, and sometimes as an eccentric and dismissed as an utopian dreamer. But in the end, no matter what they say, he's Jack Fresco, the creator and the mind behind the Venus Project, a monumental work of several fields of knowledge that unify the concept of a new future for the human civilization. Fresco's entire life is perhaps the definition of a second chance, a new opportunity for social progress in harmony with our planet and technology. 
Mr. Fresco, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for the privilege. Can you give us a brief description of what is the Venus Project? The Venus Project is an attempt to bring world peace and all the nations together. If you don't want war, killing, most crimes, you have to redesign the way society works. You have to declare all the Earth's resources as the common heritage of all the world's people. Then we have to remove the money system, which is basically corrupt. After that, we have to gradually outgrow the need for all the artificial boundaries that separate people. So we have one world working cooperatively toward preserving the environment and all life as we know it. And what is the most single important aspect of this project? A resource-based economy to declare all the resources the common heritage of all the world's people. Can you explain the distinction between a money-based economy and a resource-based economy? Well, a money-based economy produces incentive, but it also produces incentive for corruption, payoffs, paying off senators, various corporations, buying senators. It's never been a democracy. We've never had a democracy. No nation's ever had it. If you don't have equal purchasing power, you can't have a democracy. How does the Venus Project compare with communism? Communism uses money. It has social stratification. It has banks. It has armies and navies, prisons and police. We don't have any of those. Now let's talk about society. In many of your lectures, you imply that we are conditioned to think in a certain way. Is that correct? Well, if you were raised by the headhunters of the Amazon as a baby, if you never saw anything else, you'd be a headhunter. If you were raised in Nazi Germany, where all you see is Heil Hitler, Deutschland over others, you'd be a German. So I think all people are perfectly well adjusted where they're coming from. There's no such thing of good or bad people. You're taught to hate certain people, but where they're coming from is normal. If you're brought up in the South, uneducated region, you might become a member of the Ku Klux Klan. You speak with a southern accent. Where do you get that from? The environment. Where do you get, I'm going to give me a nigger and I'm going to kick his ass? You get that from the environment. It's not that people are good or bad. They're raised in an aberrated or twisted environment. So where do we stand? When is this going to end? The choice lies entirely
try a little social experiment right here. The next four minutes is gonna change your life, so listen up. Allow me to take y'all back to times 1868 to when a company incorporates and its name was the United States. Based on the UK, and the trade is to turn every single newborn into a slave. A true potential and meaning of life is lost. Not good thing about is making a wage. And to disguise the demise, they change the names of their employees and citizens. And just like every other privately owned business, there needs to be a president. All of our sovereignty laws to cooperate at the cost of our freedom. Toss aside, room for the man to die. All the time you retire This is the hook Make sure that it sits in real deep The letter ash in front of words Let verbal weapons speak From coast to coast Shore to shore And north to south We must unite With this facts The strongest weapon Is your brain and mouth A currency creates The current of the sea The cash flows in streams But it hardly reaches you and me All rivers have two sides On each side is a bank All wars have had two sides On each side was a bank so many have exposed this, but so quickly they were sank When the ship talks itself, the term is called a birth And we the product down the birth canal When we reach the dark, we're cursed Bodies of water, we're born into the slaughter This is the hook, make sure that it sits in real deep The letter ash in front of words, let verbal weapons speak From coast to coast, shore to shore, and north to south We must unite with these facts The strongest weapon is your brain and mouth this is the hook, make sure that it sits in real deep The letter S in front of words, let verbal weapons speak From coast to coast, shore to shore and north to south We must unite with this facts, the strongest weapon is your brain and mouth Indoctrination, for centuries our elders bled So we could have a life of freedom, water to drink and bread We made a profit, from things we need to live each day Maritime admiralty law with money soaked in blood we're paid would question um, our entrance into Iraq and say we should have never gone to Iraq, we should have never gone to this country, never, there's some people that say we, we showed up to Bosnia too late, you know, we, we should have gone there earlier. And the question is, well, what is the litmus test? When should we invade? Some people say, oh, well, what about Rwanda? Shouldn't we have gone there? Mm -hmm. So at some point we have to confront, um, Focusing on. most recently one of the larger things that I was focused on was the situation in Afghanistan. And actually, we had this conversation off camera, so we'll just get into it right now. Uh, the litmus test that is provided for um, our justification of invasion of another country. I think that while a lot of people... 
Capitalism is a religion that makes Satan a god. And to countless fans, Immortal Technique is a revolutionary rapper. <laughs> Those hearing him for the first time will notice it's not your conventional packaged and branded hip hop. Who really made Bin Laden the man that he is? The CIA. Heck is as much an artist as he is a. The circumstances that are behind when the United States of America finally releases its military force to aid or to topple the regime. And I don't think that that's clearly defined. I think that there are talking points people come up with to say, all right, this person's a bad person, this person's a dictator. Political activist, lyrically tackling issues like war, poverty, and racism, um, this New Yorker proceed. makes no apologies for his words or perspectives. Most, if not all, of your lyrics focus on uh, political issues and socioeconomic inequalities that are taking place domestically and internationally. At this point in time, with all the problems mounting up all over the world, what do you focus 